After experiencing defeat in the Battle of Midway in 1942, the resilience of the Japanese forces began to wane in the Pacific region. In 1945, the United States successfully captured the islands of Iwo Jima and Okinawa, signaling that Japan could no longer compete with the military strength of America. Despite being pushed to the brink of defeat, Japanese soldiers remained steadfast, with unwavering determination not to surrender, preparing to fight to the bitter end. Witnessing the prolonged and costly war for the Americans, on August 6, 1945, AB-29 aircraft dropped an atomic bomb over the city of Hiroshima, followed by Nagasaki three days later. Now, Japan was forced to surrender unconditionally, and the fate of the emperor was uncertain. Unlike Hitler, who committed suicide in a bunker, or Benito Mussolini, who was captured and executed by the Italian people, Emperor Hirohito continued to lead Japan, and live a normal life. In the Casablanca Conference, the Allied leaders agreed to demand unconditional surrender from the Axis powers. This decision had significant consequences. Crippling the military power of the Axis and toppling their governments deemed responsible for the bloody conflict, strengthening the Axis's resolve to fight to the bitter end to avoid the humiliation of submitting to the Allies. In the conflict against Japan, American political and military leaders were surprised by the ferocity of the Japanese. Their stubborn attitude and fanaticism to fight to the death, coupled with the high casualties on the American side, especially in Iwo Jima and Okinawa, raised concerns. War fatigue and the high number of casualties threatened public support for the war against Japan, prompting the U.S. government to end the war by any means possible, including the use of atomic bombs. In determining the fate of the emperor, there were two factions with different views. The retentionists believed that before and during the war, Hirohito held a special place in the hearts and minds of the Japanese people. The emperor was revered as a sacred figure, evident in the many Japanese soldiers who fought and died while shouting the famous phrase, Long live his majesty the emperor. Additionally, retentionists believed that the emperor was the key to post-war stability and the formation of American-style democracy in Japan. They feared that overthrowing the emperor, let alone abolishing the imperial system, would lead to resentment among the Japanese people, making it much harder to establish a government and sowing the seeds of future conflict. Furthermore, by retaining the emperor, the United States could more easily control Japan through the emperor's influence. On the other hand, abolitionists wanted the emperor to be ousted or tried for war responsibility. Essentially, the American public sentiment aligned with the abolitionists, who believed that failing to eradicate the imperial system would guarantee the resurgence of Japanese political culture, inclined towards conquering other nations. During the wartime period that began in 1940 and continued thereafter, the rationing of food and other commodities significantly affected the lives of millions of ordinary Japanese citizens. Even before the attack on Pearl Harbor, Japan was divided by widespread poverty and tensions between urban and rural areas, farmers and landlords, as well as between the military and civilians. There was bitterness as the wealthy and the armed forces could enjoy excess food while others struggled to get by. Undoubtedly, sentiments of hatred towards the military emerged. Hatred and anger towards the military increased as the war turned against Japan, with the islands in Japan becoming relentless targets of attacks by American B-29 aircraft. People wondered why the military was so powerless that it couldn't withstand enemy attacks. The constant hunger and destruction caused by American bomber attacks significantly diminished the people's morale to continue the fight. They were not interested in the nationalist slogans propagated by the government, as they were more focused on daily concerns for survival and obtaining food. After the emperor announced the defeat in August 1945, many Japanese no longer viewed the emperor in the same way as before and during the war. Japanese soldiers returning to their homeland felt resentment towards the military, and the emperor for the loss of their comrades, the devastation of their homeland, and the surrender considered dishonorable. 
Some veterans felt betrayed by the emperor and believed that he should be held responsible for the humiliating defeat that occurred in the war fought in his name. Overall, it can be said that after Japan surrendered, there was widespread negative sentiment towards the emperor. Many didn't care whether he was still alive or executed. Most would feel relieved to see him take moral responsibility for the war by abdicating. Clearly, there is a misconception if one assumes that punishing the emperor would offend Japan. In the end, the emperor was never tried because MacArthur and his supporters had the intention to protect the emperor. MacArthur, along with his supporters such as Brigadier General Bonnerfellers and Brigadier General Elliot Thorpe, made extraordinary efforts to shield the emperor, not only from legal processes for war crimes, but also from criticism, both domestic and international. MacArthur's campaign to shield the emperor from war crimes trial seemed boundless. Hirohito was not only positioned as an innocent individual, but also elevated to a nearly religious figure who did not need to bear moral responsibility for the war. American officials colluded with former Japanese wartime leaders, such as Lord Keeper of the Privy Seal Koichi Kido, and Navy Minister Mitsumesa Yanai, to distort the truth. Specifically, some former military leaders, especially Hideki Tojo, were selected and accused entirely of the war. The emperor was portrayed as a powerless figure, who forced to give approval under the pressure of all plans and war policies proposed by Hideki Tojo and others. As a result, an alliance was formed between the United States and Japan with a specific goal, to prevent the emperor from facing war crimes trials, and to avoid criticism, both domestically and internationally. Ultimately, America's extraordinary actions to save Hirohito from trial as a war criminal, accompanied by media censorship regarding Japanese wartime atrocities after the end of the Cold War, formed a misguided belief among the Japanese public that the emperor was innocent and Japan was seen as a victim, not as a perpetrator of a war that claimed millions of lives.